Okay, so in our previous segment we talked about what temperature was, and now we want to talk about what units should we use with it. So here in the United States, we like to use the Fahrenheit scale. And so room temperature is about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. And then uh, it turns out that water will freeze at 32 degrees Fahrenheit and then water will boil at 212 degrees Fahrenheit at one atmospheric pressure. Uh, now, along comes the metric system. So the metric system is based on the number 10, and you can see that they said, let's call the freezing point of water zero degrees Celsius, and let's call the boiling point of water 100 degrees Celsius. So it's in units of 10. So that's the metric system. And then if you recall, a meter was uh, about this big and it had 100 increments on it and we called those the centimeters. So in the same way that a meter stick has 100 centimeters, a thermometer has 100 centigrade. So going from 0 degrees Celsius to 100 degrees Celsius, you could also say you're going from 0 degrees centigrade to 100 degrees centigrade. So again, this class is going to make you popular. So the next time you go to a party, you can talk about where does the centigrade system come from. Try it. It's, it's going to work. It works every time. All right, well, this still is not very satisfying because then they said, well, how low can you go? So we know that it can be colder than zero degrees Celsius. So exactly how cold can you possibly make something? And so they did some experiments with gases. And so they measured the pressure of a gas and they measured the temperature of a gas. So at a certain temperature, it's going to have a certain pressure, and then they plotted that on a piece of paper. Then they lowered the temperature of the gas, and what they found was the pressure went down. And so let's say that it goes down to here. And then they lowered the temperature again, and they found out that the pressure went down again. And then they noticed that this was making a straight line. And then uh, they wanted to know, well, what would happen theoretically if you could take the temperature all the way down to where the pressure was zero? So when the pressure would be zero, then what they found was this line intercepted at zero, zero. So then they said, let's start all over again and let's call this zero Kelvin, absolute zero, so that you can't make anything colder than absolute zero. And so as you can see, that turns out to be about negative 273.15 degrees Celsius, or somewhere in the neighborhood of negative 450 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this is approximately the temperature of outer space. So if you're deep, deep, deep in outer space, the temperature is actually about 4 Kelvin. And that is because of the energy that comes from starlight and then also the energy that came from the Big Bang is causing the molecules in outer space to move around very, very slowly. And so there actually is a temperature in outer space of around four, but that's very close to zero. And, and so at absolute zero, molecular motion would cease because we said that temperature is a measurement of the kinetic energy of the molecules. So if the temperature goes down, the kinetic energy of the molecules goes down, which means they're going slower and slower and slower so at absolute zero, molecules would stop moving. Now, uh, you might think that, that does that mean that the electrons would stop moving around the atoms? 
and then would the electron stop spinning? No. So uh, they, would, they would still continue to spin, they would still continue to orbit uh, because quantum mechanics, which is what atoms are based on, is unaffected by temperature. So temperature affects macroscopic objects, but not microscopic objects. Okay, and then you'll notice that if zero Kelvin is equal to negative 273.15 degrees Celsius, then if we add 273 to it, then that will be the freezing point of water. So the freezing point of water is now positive 273.15 Kelvin. And then we're going to add another 100 to it to get to the boiling point. So the boiling point of water is going to be 373.15 Kelvin. So the metric unit for temperature is the degree Celsius, but the official official metric unit for uh, temperature is going to be the Kelvin. Now how are we going to convert back and forth from these three different kinds of temperatures? And so that's where these two formulas come into play. So the first one says that the temperature in Celsius is going to be equal to 5 ninths the temperature in Fahrenheit minus 32. And then to go to Kelvin, you just add 273 to it. Now, notice that's to three significant figures. So if you want to be really more precise, you would say add 273.15 to that number, but we're just going to go to three significant figures in here. So here's an example of how to use the formulas. So write down what uh, we're going to want to go from 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and we want to know what is that in degrees Celsius. So write down what you're given and what you're looking for. So the temperature in Fahrenheit is 50 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we want to go to degrees Celsius. So now we need to find which equation do we want to use. And so that's going to be equation 12.1a. And we're going to plug our numbers into it. Now remember your order of operations, which means that you need to do what's inside the parentheses first. So 50 minus 30, uh, 32 is going to be 18 and then take 18 and multiply it by 5 ninths, and that's going to be 10, and then put the unit on there. So the unit is going to be degrees Celsius. Okay, in part 2 here, what would be the temperature from part A in Kelvin? So now we know that the temperature is 10 degrees Celsius, and we want to find the temperature in Kelvin. So now we're going to use equation 12.1b and then just add 273 to it and uh, now we get 283 and then tack on the word Kelvin. So that's how you use those two formulas. Okay, let's take a break and when we come back we're going to talk about what does it mean when two objects are in equilibrium with each other.